Assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome back to Medina TV. So in today's video, we're going to be covering 10 misconceptions that people have about Islam. These were misconceptions that I actually had as a convert before I converted to Islam. <laughs> but before getting into the video, be sure to hit the subscribe button if you already haven't. We post a variety of different kinds of videos which include sit downs, lifestyle vlogs, reactions, challenges and much much more. Also be sure to hit that bell notification to get notified every single time we post. The very first misconception. She's probably reading on how to destroy us. Muslims are bad. Muslims are terrorists. <laughs> this is a misconception that you had. I'm guilty of it. <laughs> so what did you think of it? Like I, you thought all Muslims were the same? Growing up, like I've mentioned in some previous videos, I lived in a small town uh, and I didn't have as much exposure to Muslims. So I used to go off of what was in the media, what my parents would say about Muslims and I was always advised, even when I went to university, don't hang out with these people in groups because they're terrorists, they're going to try to brainwash you, stay away from them, right? Mm -hmm. So that was always the impression I had, but the more and more I got to know Muslims, the more I realized, wow, these are just everyday regular people just like me, right? Mm -hmm. And they're really nice people, so why do I have this, like, this understanding of them when that's not how they really are? I think for me, just having the exposure was big because I was very ignorant before. And like I said, when you go off an opinion without actually knowing what the people are like, then you're going to be biased to be hateful, to think negative things about them. But when you're actually exposed to them, it makes a big difference. Guys, we're actually just like innocent people and we're afraid of the same people that yes. everyone else is afraid of as Muslims. Yeah. So we don't even consider those bad people Muslims because hate and terrorism does not have a religion. They're just separate entities. They're like separate messed up people. They're not Muslims. As a Muslim myself, now I know what it's like to act like, you have to realize that anyone can be a victim of these certain groups, mm -hmm. including Muslims. Yeah. The second misconception was, or is, hey, would you like a rose? Uh, no thanks. Why? Uh, I don't know where your hands have been. Ugh. Muslims are dirty. <laughs> Muslims are dirty. Oh. Dang! Okay, we clean ourselves five times a day with evolution and we have like whistles, like actual showers which we have to take otherwise we can't pray. We need to keep ourselves clean. Cleanliness is so big in Islam. So why did you think that Muslims were dirty? <laughs> I think one thing I was not aware of was one that you wash yourself before every prayer. Mm -hmm. And this is no knock or disrespect to anyone, but as a Christian, when I would pray, I would be able to pray in any state. So we didn't have to be in a state of wudu, I didn't have to wash myself or anything. I could just pray no matter how I am. Like if you go to church, right, you have to present yourself clean, you know, wear clean clothes, whatnot. But when you're at home, you can pray in any occasion, right? Yeah. But in Islam, you have to actually wash yourself before you pray. It's just out of respect to God. Right? And I really respected that and didn't know about that. Mm -hmm. The second thing that really interested me was the fact that Muslims in the bathroom, they have this little water jug. <laughs> and for like anyone who's like maybe has a bidet, if you're familiar with that, yeah. we wash ourselves every time we use the washroom. Mm -hmm. And I, I was like, ever since I started doing that as a Muslim, I never want to go back. Yeah, but I think you did it even before you converted. I did. I started doing it. And <laughs> yeah. then... I just feel, I would feel so unclean if I didn't do that. And that's not judging anyone who doesn't do it. It's just once you start doing that, yeah. it's hard to go back. You know? <laughs> the third misconception on our list. Oh my God, I failed my test again. Ugh. Man, she looks so oppressed. Muslim women are oppressed. Oh my God, no. I'm so oppressed. This was one of like the- I am so oppressed. <laughs> Oh no, someone's forcing me to cover myself. <laughs> I used to hear stories like years ago that Muslim woman would have to sit in the back seat and the man's in the front. She's not allowed to sit in the front seat of the car. 
I would hear stories that, you know, women are not allowed to drive, which in some cases is what's true in like Saudi Arabia and certain culture, right? Saudi Arabia is not Islam. Just saying. It's, Just saying. But after learning more about um, how women like women have the choice to cover themselves, right? Yeah. There are occasions where cultures may have ideas where men force women to cover themselves, mm -hmm. but that is not the same thing. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So I've learned that women are definitely not oppressed and in Islam they're supposed to have the choice how they want to present themselves. Exactly. I mean, I'm the driver in the relationship, so that says Yee, a lot. <laughs> she's the driver. So the fourth misconception was... Hey, is everything okay? He's probably forcing her to do something again. Muslim men have all the rights. He has all the rights, guys. <laughs> I'm literally a prisoner in this house. He has all of the rights. I tell you everything what to do. He has all of the rights. Yeah. Get out of the picture. <laughs> he has all the rights. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this one was something that I found really, really interesting was the fact that Muslim women, they can choose to work or they can choose to stay at home. All the money that they earn, they can keep for themselves. They don't have any responsibility financially towards their family. However, men have to provide for their family. So that's just one of many examples where women have rights. They have rights in a variety of different ways. And like people don't know that men and women, I believe they're mentioned equally oh, yeah. in the Quran. Like the term man and term woman in the Quran are mentioned 24 times each. So even in terms of the numerology, they're equal. And the fifth misconception is... Hey, hey, I got a new puppy. Look how cute he is. Oh my god. Oh, wait, wait, wait. You're Muslim. I forgot. Huh? I forgot you don't like dogs. Never what? mind, never mind, never mind. Just never what? Mind. Muslims hate dogs. Oh my god. That one is like... <laughs> uh, I love animals, guys. I love animals. I do not hate dogs. Dogs are mentioned so positively in the Quran. Like there, there was a dog mentioned in Surah Kahab, and he's mentioned as the dog that protected the people of the cave. So the dog is mentioned positively, and dogs are mentioned as loyal, uh, loyal beings that you keep as service animals that you don't keep in the home. But that's the only thing that we don't keep them in our homes because that's where we pray. Yeah, I Did you also think that Muslims hated dogs? Absolutely, I thought they hated dogs because I used to hear stories of family knowing like tenants and having neighbors who said no dogs in the house, no dogs, but they took it as they hate dogs. But it's just that we can't keep dogs in areas where we pray. I had pet dogs growing up my entire life for anyone who didn't know. I love dogs just the same. Yeah. And just because I've changed my religion does not change the fact that like I love dogs or don't love dogs, right? But the point is that, you know, we don't hate dogs at all. Yeah, Muslims don't hate dogs. Okay, the next one is Muslims force their opinions on other people. Hey, um, I have oh, a question oh, oh, about no, this. No, 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 I don't, I don't want to hear it. Don't force this on me. I, I don't, I don't want to hear, I don't want to hear your religious beliefs. Do not force it on me, okay? It's just, okay? it's just. Okay, we got it? Good. Yo. Yo. Stop eating pork. That's the one that I actually was hearing about before. The two, let me, let me explain the two common ones that we as like when I was a Christian that we would, we would think Muslims would do. One is I used to read news articles and hear on like, you know, media that Muslims are trying to force cafeterias to remove pork because they don't want that in the cafeteria. And then I used to think of that as, wow, they're really forcing their own eating diet and beliefs on us. Mm -hmm. Why should we have to suffer just because they have a difference in belief? Yeah. Right? The second one that was very common was that Muslims force people to not say Merry Christmas. That's something that like my family oh, thinks of as well, that Muslims are forcing people to stop saying Merry Christmas. And this is something that really hurt me mm -hmm. before because I'm like, why are these people coming into like where we live and telling us what we can say and what we can't? But that's actually not true. Yeah. We don't force people not to say Merry Christmas. We just won't say it ourselves. Yeah. But people should have every right if they want to say that and that's their belief. We can't force them not to say that, right? Exactly. It's their choice to say that and we need to respect that. Like if you're celebrating Christmas, you're going to say it, right? But yeah. we don't celebrate it and we shouldn't be forced to say it. 
it's kind of the same, like it goes back and forth, right? Like we respect you, you respect us. That kind exactly. Of thing. Next misconception. Hey, I heard girls in Yemen cover themselves when they're nine years old. Is that when you cover yourself? I'm from Pakistan. Ooh. Islam and culture are the same thing. <laughs> uh, Islam is not a country, guys. It's not. It is not a country and it is not a culture. Islam is a religion. Yeah. It's the way we live our life. The religion of Islam is perfect. Muslims are not perfect, guys. So if they do something and incorporate culture and call it Islam, that's, that doesn't make it Islam. So like, if a certain country is enforcing certain Islamic rules, doesn't mean that they're actually like, you know, from Islam. Because there's no country in the world that is actually following Islam completely, 100%, you know? Yeah, I think what people do is they take the example in Saudi Arabia where people, women were forced not to like drive, for example, yeah. and then they think that's what Islam teaches and that's completely false. Okay, Saudi Arabia is such a bad example to be like, like, you know, show Islam to people. <laughs> yeah, and then in Yemen they have like young girls like wearing niqab because some of them might be forced, but that's a cultural that's practice. So Women have every right to choose how they want to dress. It's not for anyone to force them how to dress, right? Exactly. So this is culture. This is not what the religion teaches. Exactly. And I think as a non-Muslim, it's very difficult to distinguish what's the religion and what's the culture. The only real way is you have to just keep an open mind and do your research to find out what's true in yeah. the religion and what's cultural. Trust me, even as Muslims, it's hard to distinguish sometimes what's religion and what's culture. Because sometimes when you're raised with certain values, you think that's what the religion is, but really, it isn't, you know? And so. it's, it, yeah, it's, it's really frustrating because there are, there are moments where people will say, oh, don't you want four wives or do you force her to cover? Oh my God. <laughs> A lot of these things, although having four wives is in Islam, there's so many different conditions on having that. And it's not something that you just simply go do, right? Yeah. So certain things, people get the idea from media, but that's not what Islam is really about. Exactly. That's why it's a misconception, guys. Misconception. Yee. Okay, next. next misconception. Oh, it's time to pray. Jeez, so many rules. How do these people live like that? Muslims have too many rules that don't make sense. So, Mr. Garrett, ye before ye you converted, <laughs> okay. did you think that we had a lot of rules that didn't make sense? Um, there were certain things that I liked. Mm -hmm. I, I liked the zakat to give 2.5%. I always thought that was really good because it, keep, it gives you something to motivation every year to give a certain amount of charity. It keeps things organized. Mm -hmm. Um, but like the prayers, for example, I was like, why do you have to wake up at like 5 a.m. to pray? Right? How do, your sleep is going to get disturbed. Yeah. Like, why do you starve yourself? And guys, I used to talk to him about Fajr and he'd just be like, I ain't waking up for anyone at 5 a.m. Yeah. So like you thought that we had a lot of rules. Yeah. And like you guys are like working too hard to do like no reason. But after becoming a Muslim, and seeing why things are done this way, like for example with the prayers, it really, really can keep you on schedule. I've pro I prayed more than I ever did before I converted, yep. right? MashaAllah guys, he literally tries to do every single prayer every day and I don't think I've seen him miss one. I try like, my he's, best. He's been late but like he's, he hasn't missed a prayer, MashaAllah. So, Alhamdulillah, yeah. yeah. Alhamdulillah. Next misconception. Hey, I've got something to tell you. Yeah, what's up? Did you know that Jesus loves you? Did you know that Muslims believe in Jesus? Um, I don't think so. And we love Jesus a lot, to the point where we don't even say his name without saying peace be upon him after it. Wow, I had no idea. Muslims don't believe in Jesus, peace be upon him. I can't believe you had that misconception, but yeah. So, like, you thought... Did, did you think that before you met me or even after you met me? Did you think that, you know, we don't believe in Jesus? I didn't have like an 100% like there's no way they believe in him type of thing. Yeah. But it was like he's probably such a low figure that he doesn't even come up. So did I say something to you where it made you feel like, oh, we do believe in Jesus? 
Was there a time or something that I said to you? I think through asking questions and conversations, that's where I realized, yeah. oh, they actually believe in him, but they just believe in him as a prophet. And at first I'm like, that's so disrespectful. Because like, like you feel he's the son of God. How can you like lower him as such a rank as just a prophet? Like that's nothing, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So that kind of hurt me. And I was just like, that. this is ridiculous. Like he's much higher than just a prophet, right? Yeah. So. But then you eventually like believe that we do love and believe Jesus, right? Yeah, like after hearing more stories about him, like there, there's a difference of opinion on what ha happened in his life, but there is overlap as well with Christianity. So just like the concept of having him as son of God and God at the same time, and then prophet, the prophet made more sense to me. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, Muslims <laughs> love, love Jesus, peace yeah. be upon him. I even named myself after him. Yeah. Because it's had his important role in my life as a Christian, right? Lisa. Lisa, yeah. Lisa. Yeah, Lisa. Okay. Next misconception that oh you had. Oh my god. Hey, have a sip of my wine. Uh, no, I'm good with water. No, no, have some. Why not? Have some of this. I don't drink alcohol. Are you trying to impose your Sharia law on us? No, I just don't drink alcohol. I, I'm good with water. This Last one. one. Uh, this one's <laughs> this one's annoying. Muslims want to bring Sharia law to the West. Power! Power! <laughs> yeah, we're trying to bring Sharia uh, law here. Like, oh yeah. Legit, <laughs> legit. Yeah. You know? No. So the one with this is just frustrating. Is that Sharia law existed? Once upon a time, right? It still exists today. Yes. If it was done properly. So basically Sharia in Islam is just like a law that was made to bring order among Muslims. So Muslims actually practice Sharia. We practice it in our daily lives. That's what we're doing. Like all the rulings that we're following, that's part of the Sharia. Which means that we're following certain laws in Islam, certain rulings in Islam. But are we going to come here and force other people to do that? No. We're not trying to bring the Sharia law here. No. So I think simply put, Muslims are just trying to follow their religion. That's we're not trying to enforce our beliefs on anyone else. We're not trying to like, yeah. And that's basically it. Yeah. And that brings us to the end of our video, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I mean, if you have those same misconceptions, I hope we debunked them in Yay. some ways. <laughs> and if you have those like same misconceptions, please comment down below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel if you like this video. And if you want to watch future videos like this. And we post every week, so please turn your post notifications on so you can get weekly notices. We are also on Instagram and TikTok. So follow us there. And that's it. Until next time, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.